and people can yeah. actually watch it. That'd be great. <laughs> so, all right. Well, you know, I have the pleasure of uh, sitting down with director Matthew Wilson today, whose new film, Danny Doom, opens on Amazon on uh, July 30th. A little bit of a, a fun reconnection. We actually went to uh, film school together at Biola University. Yeah. So, And lived on the same floor in the same dorm. Those, those who can do, those who can't, I guess, just write about it or... <laughs> <laughs> so, but what uh, first inspired you to want to make movies? Okay, I mean, you know, like a lot of people, I grew up, you know, watching a lot of movies and just kind of daydreaming about like what it would be like, you know, to make movies someday. I always had just kind of like kind of daydream visions of like, you know, little pieces of, of story ideas and stuff and stuff that I thought would be, uh, you know, fun. Um, and then like, like when I got to like college, I was kind of figuring out like, you know, what, what should I do? Um, and initially I actually went to a college up uh, in, uh, back in Washington, Western Washington University. And I was majoring in theater there. Um, and I thought maybe I would do some like, you know, church drama things or something like that. I'd done that in high school and really loved it. Um, but then I was just kind of starting to think like, man, you know, I'd always dreamed of this filmmaking thing, like, you know, and, and I'd gone down to visit Biola, actually on the, the advice of my mother. She was like, you know, I'm, there's a couple kids from church, went down to Biola, they seem to really love it. I hear they got a film program, you know? And I went down there and just really kind of like fell in love with it. I was like, all right, so this, this, this is the thing. We're gonna go for the filmmaking thing uh, now. And then it was at Biola where I started to really dive in and, and figure out the different pieces of uh, the, the filmmaking puzzle. Like what does, you know, what does what? And that's where I really gravitated towards uh, writing. You know, like I, I love that just like, just okay, sitting down thinking about the story and uh, figuring out where it could go. And for the writing, like if it was good or bad, it was up, it, it was up to me um, versus like all the, like the shorts and stuff that we had to do there. Cause remember back when we were at Biola, the equipment was not like what it is now. The kids there now. It was like, incredibly heavy. Yeah. <laughs> so, and it like, it would never work. I remember like being in the production center like all night trying to get something edited. And it wasn't just like the editing decisions of should I, should it go here or there? It was just like, this thing won't work. Like, how do I get it to turn back on? <laughs> Actually having to have reels where you had yeah. to splice things together. Yeah. So that really got me gravitating towards, you know, writing where it's like, okay, again, if it's, if it's good or bad, it's, it's up, it was up to me. Um, and then, and for, a, for a long, long time, like that's all that I, that I did was just pursue, um, uh, uh, just writing. It wasn't until later that I got into back in then into the, uh, the filmmaking. Um, yeah. Yeah. You and I probably had the same uh, experience of production. I loved the the script writing process, but then uh, the first student film we had to make, uh, the script that got accepted for our group, uh, you don't think about it at the time, was all night scenes. So oh, okay. it was like seven weekends in a row of just being out there all night shooting. And I thought, no, right. production's not for me. <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, stuff like, and I remember like, man, we'd spend so many hours on those things and then we'd finish them and watch them and I'd be like, oh man, this looks terrible. <laughs> Like what happened? Good learning experience, you know. Like I uh, would, you know, wouldn't wouldn't change it. Well, maybe I'd throw in some better equipment there, but like it, it was a good learning experience. I think that's for anybody, anyone interested in filmmaking. Like, don't be afraid of making something that that doesn't turn out so well. It's like that's part of the process. <laughs> so I know you uh, kind of started out your career working uh, for various jobs. I know you mm -hmm. you worked for Lionsgate for a while and did some some writing. Um, I think you have an episode of Transformers. Yes. Yeah. Well, the Transformers one actually came about a, a bit uh, later, but like, like pretty, pretty quick after Biola, like, I mean, I guess what, 2004, um, I ended up getting an assignment to write for the show uh, Crypto the Superdog. Um, I'd been submitting scripts to this website, tdwriter.com. They were running contests and I won one of their contests. And one of the guys on their board was this guy, Stan Berkowitz, who had written animation for like forever. Um, he didn't have anything that like, you know, available at the, at the time for me, but he was like, Hey, you know, like meet people there at the, like Comic Con was coming up. He's like, Hey, you know, you meet people at Comic Con, you know, he's like, Hey, this, this guy, Alan Burnett, you should meet him. He's doing you know shows and stuff. So I met Alan Burnett. Alan Burnett was like big uh, producer, did Batman, the animated series back in the day. Um, and I, and he was like, yeah, sure. You know, send me a script. We'll see. You know, it wasn't, it wasn't promising anything. Um, I'd call to follow up and he would like forget who I was. He was like, what? He was like, where did we meet? And he was like, I, I got your script. Okay, okay, you know, well, I'll get to it. So, uh, it was very kind of like nonchalant about it. But eventually months later, he called me back. He was like, hey, he's like, actually, I, I got your, your to your script in my pile here. And actually, I liked it. You know, like, I got this show coming up, Crypto Super Dog. Why don't you pitch me some ideas? You know, um, And so I pitched him some ideas for episodes and uh, one of them he liked. So I got to write uh, that. 
Um, and then I ended up uh, writing a couple more things for him as well for a, a different show, a preschool show called Firehouse Tales. Um, and then he uh, recommended me to a couple other guys who had been at Warner Brothers Animation, but then were doing a show over at uh, Disney called Brandy and Mr. Whiskers. Um, so uh, I, I got to go and, and write an episode of that uh, as well. So like I had that period there, you know, fairly early on after college where it seems like, wow, hey, I'm just getting like, I'm an animation writer now. I'm just getting assignments like this is this is great. You know, it's all downhill from here. Um, well, it was not. <laughs> Like after, you know, a year, year and a half, all of a sudden it's like, it seemed like, like I wasn't getting any more animation writing assignments, you know, I was in touch with people and just, you know, people were just kind of like, yeah, I don't know, you know, we'll see, we'll get back to you maybe, you know, um, and like just nothing happened. It ended up being like, I think it was like an 11 year gap before I got another assignment, which was on uh, uh, Transformers there. Um, but that let, you know. Uh, the, like that led me to be, you know, to focus my my time on other things. Like that's when I really got into just writing original uh, screenplays. You know, just wrote, 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 wrote. Because um, it's like, hey, I've had lots of time. No, no one was hiring me to write anything, so I had time on my own to go and write uh, a lot of uh, scripts. And was really trying hard to uh, to sell, uh, you know, the scripts. I had gotten really excited because at one point I had this uh, 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 manager who was was taking on my scripts and, and showing them around. Uh, to people and he was the same uh, manager who had discovered uh, Diablo Cody and got Juno made you know so I was like oh my gosh like this guy is showing people you know my stuff and here you got uh, Juno made you know um, so you know I just wrote my little heart out and wrote all sorts of scripts to send him and you know long story short none of them sold <laughs> um, and so I was like all right I have this pile of scripts what do I you know uh, what do I uh, uh, do with them um, and then also around that time um, I'd started to do some like like little shorts and things like that was around okay now we're getting to like in the timeline <laughs> uh, we're getting to like, like 2008 ish or so uh, when funnier die was starting to become a big uh, thing and so I did a couple shorts uh, and put them on funnier die and like they seemed to do well one of them they actually featured it on uh, the, the homepage for a little while um, it was the, the Christian dating one I, don't know if you, I, I actually you watched that one, that one. Yeah. I made I made my wife. <laughs> Uh, watch it as well. Uh, having both of us having grown up in the church, uh, there was a lot of truth. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that you know, like that was fun. It was a fun, and you know, and it's like not like anything directly came out of it. Like I didn't have some producer calling me saying, "Hey, we saw you're short. We want to hire you for this or that." But it was like it was just kind of like a good confidence booster. Like, okay, people seem uh, to like uh, that. Um, and I remember I was talking actually with one of my uh, uh, pastors at the time um, at uh, church who was also a director who directed like commercials, music videos and stuff. And I'd written a script that I wanted him to direct. I was like, Brandon, like I wrote the script, you should direct it. We'll put it together and do like an independent thing. Um, and he was, and he just kept saying, well, like, why don't you, he's like, why are you trying to get me to direct your scripts? You should direct them yourself. And I was like, I, I don't know how to do that. And he was like, well, you okay, did those shorts, right? And like, I didn't think of those shorts as like something that would qualify me to go to do anything other than I don't know, make more shorts. Um, but like you know, him saying that was kind of like, oh, kind of got the wheels, you know, uh, turning. But maybe I could try something like that. So no, uh, you've talked about your first big break was uh, the umpire, which kind of got picked up yes. in the Amazon contest. Can you tell <laughs> a little bit about uh, what was that experience like? Sure. Yeah, because that I mean that was just I mean yeah that was just a few years after there. Um, where uh, Amazon started their, their new studio system. Um, and at the time, uh, the idea was that uh, they in invited uh, filmmakers and writers to submit uh, scripts and what they were calling test movies to their site. And a test movie was like, well, just go out and make some version of the movie however you can. You know, most people were doing like storyboards or something with voiceover and like, it doesn't have to look pretty. Um, it's, just, it's, it's just like a, a rough pass in the movie to see uh, you know, what it would, what it would look like. And then we'll put those in front of audiences and then let them vote and whatever the best ones are. Then Amazon will put money behind to go and uh, make them into a big uh, feature. Um, that, that part of the, the process, they never actually ended up doing as far as I know, like actually making any uh, big bunch of movies out of any of them, but it got a lot of people like me to go out and, and try something like that to, to make a, a full length um, feature. Cause that was a big thing. It had to be the full length. You couldn't, you couldn't just do a short. It's like, no, we want to see the whole story. Um, and I was thinking like, well, here I'd just done, you know, some shorts and stuff a few years uh, uh, in, in those, those few years prior. So I was like, why don't I give that a shot? Just I'd be like, it just, it'll be just like a short, but longer. <laughs> um, so I got uh, some, some friends uh, uh, together, all, all just people from my uh, uh, church there, you know, cause it's like, all right, I'm going to church in, in Hollywood. I know plenty of actors. Um, 
And so I would get them together and everyone was working around like full time, uh, you know, jobs and stuff. I was I was working a, a day job over at uh, Disney at the time. So we would just go whenever uh, we had uh, uh, a time and go shoot at like, you know, either like the house where I was living at the time or uh, like a, a park nearby where we did all uh, the baseball scenes. Um, and so, yeah, so I did, you know, shot the whole thing and then submitted it to Amazon and lo and behold, won uh, their their contest for uh, for May of, of that year for the best uh, test movie, um, and and again that was a good like confidence booster for me like coming off of like this season where because it's written... audience votes right N no for the, like okay. like the audience like like chimes in like they, there was you know thing where audience could put on comments and stuff but like the the, the as far as picking which movies won the contest. It was the a little bit like their pilot process where you could watch them and give, I always used to love that when they put their pilots out there. The ones right. I love never made it to series. So I don't know what that <laughs> says about me. <laughs> yeah, it was like this whole new idea for how to develop movies and shows, you know? Um, and it can, you know, I mean, Amazon, they love to experiment, you know, and it was an experiment. They seem to have pretty much gone away from it. And now they're more or less like a traditional studio. They just develop stuff in house. Um, and, and aren't really doing like the, the, the user generated thing anymore. Um, but it was it for, for people like me, you know, it was, it was, it, it was, a, it was a great thing. It, it was a good, uh, like, like kind of like stepping, like kind of a baby step <laughs> into filmmaking, you know, cause it wasn't quite a real movie. It was a test movie. Um, but then the next one that I did, uh, for them, for, uh, that they also submitted for, uh, the Amazon system uh, was called uh, uh, Speak to Me in Poetry. It was the one where this guy has this curse. Everything he says rhymes. He can't stop rhyming and it ruins his life. He's got to find some way to get rid of the curse. Um, and that one, like I challenged, and that was another one that I'd written back when I was just trying to sell scripts, you know? Um, but uh, like I challenged myself to try to like not make it a test movie, try to make it a real movie as much as I could, even with still with no money or anything, you know, and still using the same, like it was, it was my roommate's camera that I, that I, that I borrowed for the shoot. Thank you, Eric Branscombe, if you're watching again, for letting me use your camera for those two movies. <laughs> um, but uh, like I challenged myself to try to like as much as possible, make it just, you know, like a real movie and not cut any corners. Um, and looking back now, I can see like, oh, of course, all sorts of like mistakes I made and things I could have done better. But again, it was like it was like a learning process. I had the opportunity through these test movies to kind of slowly uh, just like like build and build and learn um, each time and, and figure out how to do things uh, uh, better. Because I would, you know, I'd go out and shoot. And then when, when I was editing, oftentimes I'd be like, man, like who shot this? This is terrible. Like next, <laughs> like this is so hard to edit. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, I think you went on mute. Uh, but uh what were you saying? I was just, you got to fire the DP. <laughs> right, yeah, yeah. And the director and the producer, you know, all the, all the things that I was doing myself. Um, but, you know, but it was it was just such a great uh, uh, learning process because like, all right, I'd go ahead and edit a scene and then I'd be like, all right, next time I'm out there shooting, I got to do this, this, and this better, you know, and um, kind of slowly was able to uh, build, which I think is actually a much better process for any like, you know, filmmakers out there, like, I think it's much better to be able to go and just have that kind of freedom, that space to be able to, you know, do your thing, make a ton of mistakes, you know, and, but just keep going and going and learning rather than like, if the first time you're directing something is like a big budget production, you know, and it's kind of like, it's got to be good or you're, you're fired and you never work again. <laughs> like that's a lot of pressure. <laughs> um, and, you know, and, it's, and I think that's why it's very, it's very hard to get into those uh, uh, positions. Um, so I think it's better to kind of do the do the slow build and just and, and learn as you go. And so from there, you know, I saw you made a few other kind of comedy features. I was able to watch uh, a few of them that are still out there. I think I told you um, your one that you did, The Virgins and The Pastor and the Pro. I watched those off of Voodoo, which was kind of fun. But now your latest film is Danny Doom, which opens on July 30th uh, on Amazon, correct? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So tell me a little bit about the inspiration for that story. Okay, a lot of things. It's probably the one, the one that has the most like personal, like you know, stuff for me uh, in it. Uh, a lot of it uh, based on like like things I remember from like my high school experience, um, and I like I, I I'd always had the idea of wanting to do a high school movie where he's two different. Uh, characters because I felt like in, in some ways that was kind of me like later on in high school 
um, I had I had really gotten into my youth group at church. Like I I had you know really I, like I had had rededicated my life uh, to to the Lord. Um, I was just enjoying those relationships I was developing with uh, my, my my youth group and with like my the the youth pastor and our, our interns and all that. And I was just like loving that way into that you know. Um, but then at, at the same time, I think I was kind of then neglecting my relationships with like school friends and people I'd grown up with. I was kind of growing more distant from from then, you know, um, I don't even know why it's just like, it's, I think just kind of like I was spending so much time with youth group that I was starting to just not feel like I knew how to connect with the the school friends um, anymore. Um, so like, so like in the, like particularly the, the, the last year of my senior year, it's like, man, at youth group, I would be, I'm like, just the life of the party. So excited, like high energy, just so jazzed to be there every time. And every time I get with those people, just, oh man, just, just like in my zone, like, so, just so like, like, like feeling great, you know? Um, but then at school, I'd be like this, this lonely guy who felt like, you know, disconnected and, and didn't like, felt like wasn't feeling the same, you know, thing from with like my relationships uh, there. Like there'd be times when I spend my lunch hour, just kind of walking around by myself because I've somehow felt disconnected. Like I couldn't go and sit with like my old, friends anymore. I just kind of didn't know how to, you know, handle it all. So I had, it was like this thing of like, you know, that your different environments can create two completely different <laughs> uh, personas, you know, um, obviously with the movie with Danny Doom, it's, it's a bit uh, 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 different uh, where his per persona is, you know, he's like, he is, he fits in well, like in, in youth group, uh, uh, world, but does not fit in well with like the, the when it comes to romance and uh, the girl he would like who has no interest in like the youth group guys thinks they're nerds like she likes the bad boys, uh, but that he figures out that he can he can be one of those you know uh, uh, bad boys and uh, impress her um, as long as she doesn't know it's actually him as long as she thinks it's this other uh, uh, guy um, and that kind of came from I mean my own uh, experience adventures in, uh, you know, in, in, uh, in going after uh, girls who had no interest in the nerdy uh, church guys who would rather, you know, be with some like bad boy uh, type. I've certainly, you know, experienced that. <laughs> um, the, uh, when he asked her to go to coffee, I have to make me laugh. Like, <laughs> there was no doubt in my mind who wrote this. <laughs> <laughs> that was... Classic Viola thing. Has to go to the coffee, take her to the, uh, the Eagles nest. Yeah. <laughs> Christian College. So, and you actually get to, you have a small part at the beginning that you're in this, which was yes. was fun for me. Was it, what was it like for you to be, um, you know, because I watched quite a few oh. of your movies and I didn't clock you in a lot of them. But Okay. Yeah. That one, I, I, I shouldn't have given myself lines of dialogue. I screwed up my own dialogue. There was one line where I'm supposed to say, because it's all like they're talking about his uh, birthday, right? Um, you know, and I'm supposed to say he should have a birthday party, like be specific about the party. Instead, I just say he should have a party, like and like and there's no one around to correct me, you know, because I'm it's like my uh, thing. I'm sure the other the other actors were very good about being spot on with the lines, and so um, you know, I'm sure they probably noticed, but we're too nice to. Well, they thought you were taking poetic license. So it's <laughs> you're like, well, he's the director, but he decided he wanted to change the line. Uh, you know. Well, because, and that was, okay, because the birthday thing, that was another part of, like, the inspiration for uh, the movie, you know, how it starts. Like, he was born on September, September 11th. 11th. The yeah, September 11th. Yes, because, like, I was, I was thinking just about how much things have changed, you know, like, from when, from, like, when we were growing up to now, kids that are growing up now and all the different things that they have to uh, deal with. And I really feel like, like, September 11th, like, on 2001 was kind of like a, the turning point where like, you know, it's kind of ushered in this, this like age of anxiety we're all living in uh, now. And so I was thinking like, wow, kids who grew up uh, in that, uh, like, like they would, they, they would have graduated high school uh, uh, last year, you know, in uh, yeah. 2020. Um, so amazing. yeah, it's just that thing of like, what's, what's new, what, what kids are dealing with uh, now, but in some ways how things are still the same. You know, yeah. the kids are, they're trying to figure out life, trying to figure out what they uh, believe. Uh, but this guy, most of all, wants a girl. Trying, yeah, trying to get a girl to go. <laughs> so like most of your films that I've, I've seen, this one's a comedy. What for you is the toughest part about uh, writing comedy and, and directing for comedy? Okay. Like the, the more I do this, the more I, I'm amazed that like it never gets easier um, I think the hardest thing is convincing myself that something I've written is funny. <laughs> it, it, it like, it, and sometimes honestly, it's like, I'll just, I'll give up and be like, okay, this moment is just like an interesting story moment. Maybe it's not supposed to be funny. And really I was trying to make it funny, but just, I just, uh, you know, it wasn't, wasn't good enough. Um, yeah. It's just, it's hard. You know I mean? I honestly, I try to just 
just keep keep hammering away at it until I come up with something that like, oh, okay, that is making me excited. Like that is making me laugh. Like I think that would be, you know, uh, funny. Like it's it's rare. It seems to get rarer and rarer to where like the scripts are, are harder to write now and taking longer than uh, they used to. And I thought I was just funny all the time. <laughs> um, so, okay, but then like once I get to the point of like, okay, I'm finally happy, you know, with uh, uh, the script ready to go out and um, uh, shoot it. And that, well, also I should talk about there, there's a step that I do in the middle where um, I don't just write it and then say, oh, okay, it's good. Now go shoot. I like to do like, like read throughs. Um, mm -hmm. This is something that I started back uh, uh, when I lived in LA with uh, friends from my church. Um, like we would just get together and read through the script um, and then talk about it after. Um, and even before we would get to the conversation part, something about hearing the words now out loud and just uh, experiencing it with other people in the room. It's like, I can suddenly feel things that are working and things that are like, Ugh, that <laughs> and things that need work. Yeah. <laughs> just from, just from the various you know, joke that didn't land the way you thought it was. Right. Like, yeah. There, there's always that, you know, there's stuff that like, okay, they're going to love this and like no reaction. It's like, okay, maybe not. And then other stuff that I think is just, it was just like, Oh, I think it was like a, like a throwaway and people are like, Oh, that was great. It's like, Oh, okay. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, that was one thing I noticed watching quite a few of uh, your movies. There's just like, like some drop-in lines that I, you know, when I was watching uh, the pastor and the pro, it was at night. I had just taken this drink of water, and he was uh, meeting with the the pastor's niece, and she talks about can we do one on one? And he he said something like not without a significant change of church policy, and I just I lost everything. My wife's just looking at me like, why am I now wet? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, those and, you know, and I love doing stuff like that. Doing like in like having characters that are in uh, the church, you know, they're 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 believers, um, but not doing a uh, you know not doing a cynical version of that. To, like the point is not to say like oh it's all nonsense. What's the matter with them? It's like I am one of those people we're making fun of. You know, we are we are these people. Like it's okay to uh, laugh at this. In some ways, I think it actually it, it affirms what we uh, believe that we are sinners in need of a savior. And when yeah. we show we expose different ways that like we're you know messing up and doing uh, silly things i think it's not it's not at all a, a threat to what we believe like to me i actually think it actually uh, uh enhances it you know um yeah there was i saw a uh, christian comedy earlier this year called church people which i don't know if you've seen that but at the at the I end i feel like i might know somebody i think i might know someone who worked on that if i remember if it's the one i'm thinking of at the end, yeah, sure. there's the part that I really like. One of the characters breaks the fourth wall and says, you know, most people don't think Christians are funny. Christians have always been funny. We're just usually not funny on purpose. <laughs> and so I think about, you know, how hard it is to to nail. And that was one of the things I appreciated with, with Danny Doom and with several of your other ones is kind of nailing that, that the comedy of just the people trying to get through everything. Uh, well, and what's interesting is that a lot of that came from just kind of traditional uh, screenwriting advice, like write what you know, uh, be honest, you know, don't try to like write, I mean, I mean like, like the best kind of comedy is gonna be from something that like, you know, personally, this is true. Like you've been there, you've seen that. Yeah, uh, you've experienced things like that. Um, you know that people are gonna, or get, uh, people who see, you know, who know those things are, are gonna get it. You know, but hopefully, even people who who aren't like people who are are not in the world can like see how this would go. Like in the same way that I watch comedies all the time that are from a completely different worldview than uh, than than mine, and it makes me feel like I know what life is like for them. You know, it's like I don't, I I know, I, I've been to New York City like 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 only once in my life. You know, and I and I, I know like some people, you know, who are who are Jewish but not a lot, and yet I feel like I know a lot about what it's like to be a Jewish person living in New York City because I've seen like you know Seinfeld and Woody Allen movies and stuff like that. It makes me feel like I know what their life is like from from hearing their stories. Yeah, that kind of brings me to, I really appreciate your uh, writer's website, which I went through and looked. I love the stories you tell about a lot of them. And for um, your film, The Virgins, I loved that you put this blog post um, and there was a passage out of it that really struck me at the end when you talk about, uh, you know, being a Christian making art as opposed to specifically a Christian, you know, trying to be an evangelical film. I love that you wrote, is it a Christian movie? I don't know, but it's definitely a comedy. Was it made by a company that makes Christian movies? No, but it was made by a Christian, an uncool, unmarried Christian who had many terrible experiences that by God's grace have been great inspiration for comedies. I, you know, I really love the realness of that. So what 
you know, what is maybe the biggest challenge for you making films that express who you are in a largely secular world and environment? I mean, I think some of it's like the, 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 the vulnerability, you know, I mean, like, like, okay, for Danny Doom, like all his like terrible attempts to, uh, you know, to woo Megan, it's like, I've done all stuff like that. And that is, that's not something I, that's proud, I'm proud to admit, but it's something that I recognize as good fodder for comedy. You know, I've done the trying too hard, you know, I've done the thing of showing up and just, just expecting, if I just show up enough times, she'll fall in love with me or what I, I don't, you know, none of it worked. <laughs> Still single, still trying the best to ability, the ability is availability, right? <laughs> yeah, that was my that was my philosophy. Yeah, um, so yeah, it's like stuff like that to be like, all right, I have to like you know kind of embarrass you know embarrass myself a bit here for for the sake of of letting everyone else you know uh, uh, essentially laugh at me um, as well. You know, um, so there there's that, and then there's the whole kind of like. I don't know if you call it the, like the, the the business side or the industry side of it too, where like like the kind of the type of thing I'm doing here. I, most most people in the industry like aren't really convinced that it's going to work. You know, there's still a view that it should either it's either got to be a you know a straight up Christian movie or just a, a traditional comedy. You know, like trying to blend the two is is just is ludicrous. And like and I'm like that's that is the space I love to be in. I feel like that's the best space. Um, uh, to, to be, and I think people who are actually discovering the movies and watching them are, you know, are appreciating them. Like someone just got very noisy out here. There's someone with a leaf blower nearby. Oh, all right, real, real life, real life here. <laughs> I guess I don't know if you can hear it. I, I hear it loud. I have to talk loud. No, that was why well, I muted myself for a minute. My office mate uh, was having a good old time. Uh, <laughs> um, so, what are you most proud of with uh, Danny Doom? Okay, I think um, the the sequence. I mean, I tried to do this without spoilers, but the sequence, like the band party, uh, from from the moment they start like the 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 drinking contest through like the rest of that sequence, the times so far when I've like you know shown it uh, to people, it's just been with like a few like you know friends and family so far. But when it gets to that point, it feels like suddenly everyone's paying attention. Like, what is what is going on? Like, what is he doing? And like, as a storyteller, just to like feel that, like, ah, they're actually paying attention. Like, they're really paying attention at this moment. Was just such a like, okay, I did something right because that that is hard to uh, get to, you know. Because I feel like we're all so used to watching stuff that that we watch so passively now, to where it's no yeah. problem to. You getting up to go to the that three, the, the three or, screen experience at home. Yeah, yeah. You're you're what you got a show on, but you're checking things on your phone. Maybe you're talking to somebody else. You know, so it's so hard to like have something that everyone's going like, wait, what? Everybody, shut up! I got to see what happens here. And it, to me, it felt like that sequence, like like we actually like like got there. So I was like, ah, okay, that was <laughs> that was you know that was that was great. Um, and. And yeah, and beyond that, I think just like, I mean, I guess, I don't know, I just, I don't know if I'd call it like, like, like pride, but just, just feeling blessed that, that like, that God has allowed me to do this, that all my, my experiences and adventures in life have led me to doing, uh, you know, uh, something like this. Cause say, like, cause say if I had, you know, what I wanted back in the day, if I had, you know, from that initial period of getting some animation assignments, if I, if I had just taken off there and was like, you know, just writing, get paid to, to write stuff nonstop. Um, like, you know, maybe I never would have uh, stepped out and, and tried these independent things. Maybe I never would have explored this thing of like doing stories about uh, uh, Christian characters that I really love doing uh, now, you know? So like, it's like the road, the road did not go at all the way I thought it was going to to go, but I'm, I'm happy with where God has, has, has directed me. You know? And I, I think that was one of the things I liked um, best about Danny Doom too, was it's this kind of, crazy story and you're like I, I don't know if this is going to work but the way the performances come through and the way the story goes through you just get uh at least for me i got invested in in what was going to happen um, well, and i would say i was so pleased with the actors that i got this time i mean the, the actors you know for, for all of them have, have been uh, great but uh, this one because of the the timing like when we shot it was july last year you know so things have been pretty shut down for uh months and then at the time we were able to to pull it off because like i, I film with so few uh people you know most scenes are just a couple of people the crew is like me and and like usually just just one or two other people at at a time so because we were so small we were able to pull 
pull that off uh, 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 then, whereas everything else was shut down. So like when I started sending out the auditions, like the actors were just so like like excited. They were like, hey, some someone's shooting something. Like, yes. Like they were just so thrilled to be able to to come out and, and, and work, you know, because nothing had been going on for many months at, at that point. So I feel like there was just, you know, a great amount of like talent there and a great amount of enthusiasm where people just really wanted to, you know, just do something fun. So we talked about this one opens on July 30th. What uh, is next for you? You know, okay, I haven't quite decided yet, but I got a couple different ideas for other uh, features that would kind of be in the same uh, space. One is like an idea about uh, some some kids who have to go spend a weekend with like their their crazy uncle. Um, I, I have six uh, uh, nephews and one niece now, so I spend a lot of time with you know with them, and so like I I, I maybe I am the crazy uncle now, but it's giving me a lot of ideas <laughs> for stories. Uh, so that's one potential. And then I got another potential uh, a Christmas movie idea uh, that would have like kind of like a Freaky Friday twist to it. Kind of like a Freaky, Freaky Friday meets Christmas vacation uh, type uh, um, story. And again, both of them that have the element of like, you know, where they're, they're believers and trying to navigate all this um, uh, as well. Um, I also I have some ideas for like TV shows and stuff I think would be great too. I know with with TV shows it's like I know at the moment like no one's calling me up and saying hey please pitch us your TV show ideas. But if anyone, anyone ever called like I've got you know some some great ones. It's stuff that would be like too expensive for me to try to go out and shoot on uh, uh, my own. Um, but like. Like there's okay, there's this town in uh, Washington State, uh, Roslyn, that has this this really interesting history. I've gotten real into uh, uh, local history because I've written a few uh, Christmas plays for my church that were based on like specific the specific local history of our um, area there. One of them involved uh, how people had first moved to the area to become uh, chicken farmers, and then another one was sent around the events of uh, the the World's Fair that happened in Seattle in 1962 uh, and really kind of changed uh, uh, the area there for. Uh, uh, for good, it's like I said. So it's why the Space Needle was built, you know. Um, but this town, uh, uh, Roslyn, um, had just had similar things. Really interesting, like local history, and I think would make a great, you know, series. Um, so yeah, so the the wheels are turning. <laughs> With all the uh, streaming services, I'm sure they're gonna they're gonna need more ideas. <laughs> I feel like I see the same three concepts over and over again. It's well, time it's for something new. And it's kind of the funny thing. It's like there's so much content out there right now. There's so much stuff, and yet everyone feels like, oh, I can never find anything to watch. You know, there's a million shows, but it's like, oh, but I don't know if I'm going to like any of them. I spend more time just scrolling through Netflix trying to find something to watch than I do actually watching the shows on Netflix. <laughs> well, thank you so much uh, for your time, and uh, I right, hope everybody uh, heads on to Amazon on Friday, July 30th. Danny Doom. Uh, be sure to check it out. All right. Thanks.